The Great Reset with Cesar Vidal and Lorenzo Ramirez. Very good morning, very good afternoon, very good evening, and above all, very welcome here to The Great Reseteo, that program in which we approach the tempestuous ocean of geopolitics, geoeconomics, and geostrategy every weekend. Well, today we start a series, a series that will derive in different episodes to explain to you in a solid, forceful, and documented way how we have reached the current Middle East conflict. And of course, the ship, as always, will be driven with his special skill, with his absolutely unsurpassable style, and with his truly Himalayan documentation, Mr. Lorenzo Ramirez. Very good evening, Mr. Lorenzo. Tell us where we are going today. We are going to go deeper into this Middle East conflict. Indeed, very good evening, Mr. Cesar. Today we have to travel to the Holy Land, as you rightly say, Mr. Cesar. This is going to be the first of a series of programs we are going to dedicate to the epicenter of one of the most troubled conflicts in practically the last hundred years, and whose history mixes religion, the struggle for natural resources, of which little is said, but we will be talking about it in this series, World Geopolitics. The desires of some politicians who have created their empires by means of blood and fire, forgetting precisely the precepts of the precepts of the law, forgetting precisely the precepts that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. A land that today is once again witnessing the resurgence of endemic warfare, and which is surrounded by numerous myths, much disinformation, narrative disinformation, and a manipulated history, a history that we are going to try to summarize here today in its first part, in this first edition of The Great Reset, that we are dedicating to the Arab-Israeli conflict and the question of Palestine. We are going to talk about the origin, part one, the origin. Palestine is the territory from a geographical perspective. We can say that it is the territory roughly between the Mediterranean and the Jordan River Valley we would be talking about from west to east. On one side, yes, on one side, and then between the Litani River and the Negev, not including Sinai, although some people include it, from north to south, Sinai would be Egypt. Sinai is generally excluded. It is usually excluded. It is usually excluded. In antiquity, Palestine was intermittently controlled by various independent kingdoms and numerous great powers, including ancient Egypt, the Persians, Alexander the Great, the Roman Empire, various Muslim dynasties, and the Crusaders as well. And in modern times, the area was ruled by the Ottoman Empire and then by the United Kingdom under British mandate. And this region was one of the first in the world to have human communities, primarily agricultural. There are many excavations that have taken place there, that really there is practically that whole area where civilization begins. Let us also remember between the Tigris and the Euphrates, the whole part of Iraq and all that part of the Middle East where civilization began, at least according to what official history tells us. Already during the Bronze Age, Canaanite cities were established there. I don't know if the Canaanites could come now also to claim their peace, because of course, before the Bronze Age, the Canaanites were already established there. Before uh... It is not very clear that there are many Canaanites left, but there is no doubt that the Canaanites were there for millennia. That is, they were there much more than the Israelites and much more than the Arabs as well. And that when Abraham appears there for the first time as a simple immigrant, the fact is that there were already a series of Canaanite kingdoms and they had reached the Philistines from where the name of Palestine came from. That is, that it had been populated for a very long time. To begin with, of course, because when we talk about land rights, where do we draw the line? Because each people or each state sees history up to a certain moment. Of course, that land... Well, at the beginning, there was nobody, obviously. There are 10, many theories. 10,000 years ago, there were probably few people. In natural law, or natural law, there is a lot of talk about that concept, that the first one who comes to the land should own it. But there is a lot of literature on the subject, but I simply wanted to make this reflection at the beginning so that we are very clear that when the subject of property rights over certain territories is raised or brought up, then we also have to raise this series of questions. Those who would later be known as Israelites established their dwelling there around the year 1000 BC, when they fled from the land. Well, before, well, let's see, they passed through there because we are possibly talking about the 18th century BC. 
There was a family from which Israel would descend because Israel did not yet exist, and we are talking about the 18th century. The arrival of Israel later, already as a group of 12 tribes, there is discussion. Some people think that they arrived in the 15th century before Christ, that they arrived in the 15th century B.C., and there are those who think that they arrived in the 12th or 13th century B.C. I personally believe that they arrived in the 15th century B.C. I personally believe that they arrived in the 15th century B.C., but I insist this is a question that is by no means settled. That is to say, there are very respectable specialists who defend the thesis of the 13th century and others who support that of the 16th century, and of course we never agree. But effectively we are talking about, well, at the earliest, an arrival around the 1400 BC, and at the latest, around the 1200 BC. Egypt. Let us all remember, even if we have basic knowledge, flight from Egypt, Exodus, they were slaves of Pharaoh, exile in Babylon. Then they already create a political structure divided between the kingdoms of Israel and Judah, two different kingdoms that were conquered. That occurs around the 10th century BC, that is to make a little summary. The entry into Palestine, the land of Canaan, as it was known then, the Israelites starred, according to some theses, in the 15th century BC, in my opinion the most accurate according to others in the 12th, 13th century BC, that entry does not imply the total occupation of the land. That is, it is true that is defeated. Joshua defeats a series of coalitions of Canaanite kingdoms against Israel. It was not a single Canaanite kingdom either, exactly, which also exactly. needs to be explained because the concept of nation state, which is much later, needs to be taken out of our heads. There were kingdoms, there were groups that also derived from clans, from relatives, from different ways of understanding their own traditions, their own myths. Exactly. Indeed. And there are a series of coalitions that Joshua breaks up, but even the book of Joshua and the later book of Judges establish very clearly that Israel did not control the whole land. In fact, even though there was a formal division of Canaan among the 12 tribes, the truth is that there were tribes that were left without their territory because they did not control it. And even in those territories they controlled because sometimes they controlled what was the mountain, where it was easy to establish a guerrilla war, but they did not control much less the plain where, for example, they had to face such formidable adversaries as the Philistines, the Palestines, from where the name Palestine comes from. Those who think that the name Palestine, because this is an invention of the last decades, or have much ignorance or not explained, because Palestine derives precisely from the peoples of the sea that are coming to different parts and that come from what we now know as Greece, and specifically the Philistines are located on the coast of what would now be the state of Israel, including Gaza, which is one of the great Philistine cities, and in Indeed, these Philistines are really going to be a knife in the side of Israel, which becomes a monarchy with Saul in order to be able to fight better against these peoples that continue to populate Canaan, because I insist Canaan is not completely controlled by the Israelites. And by the year 1000, year up, year down, as you very well said, there is already a kingdom of Israel clearly embodied by the national hero who is King David, which reaches its maximum expansion with his son Solomon. But after Solomon's death, it is divided into two kingdoms, a southern kingdom, which is the kingdom of Judah, which includes only the members of the tribe of Judah, hence the name Jews, and the northern kingdom, which brings together the ten tribes of Israel, which is a kingdom that, as we will have the opportunity to see, will have an end of existence. Well, then came the Assyrian and Babylonian empires, important military conquests. We must bear in mind that the Jewish religion has always had, as one of its fundamental elements, that return to the Promised Land. That is also why I wanted to start here. The Promised Land by God, yes. In relation to Syria and Babylon, I have to stop there by force. That is to say, 
that division of ancient Israel into two kingdoms, to the north, the kingdom of Israel, to the south, the kingdom of Judah, has consequences, and that is that they are two small kingdoms that are in the middle of the game of the great powers.